In today's video, we're going to be diving into the upcoming pattern, taking a look at some very cold temperatures for this time of year. We've been talking a lot about that recently. I can tell you now that for a couple of days in a row on the model runs, we have seen some signs of this breaking up and giving way to much more normal summertime weather that we can anticipate. So I'm going to be talking about that throughout this video. Also, some severe weather threats in there and also a big time increase in the overall thunderstorm activity that is going to accompany that warm up that could be on the way for early June. Let's go ahead and dive into things and really the, the first frame here really tells the full story very well. We see relative warmth, it's neutral in some areas but mostly warmth here for this western area and we just see tons and tons and tons of unseasonably cold temperatures throughout these blue and green areas especially areas like the upper midwest great lakes ohio valley mid-atlantic here even into the northeast this is kind of the heart of it and the greens are 10 to 15 degrees below normal so this is certainly uh, a pretty far departure from what's typical uh, as we work our way towards tomorrow on memorial day we can see some very unseasonably cold temperatures especially here for the plains lower midwest in areas of the southeast and deep south in here Notice that there is some warmer anomalies very, very close to these far below average temperature anomalies. And that is going to be the area where a lot of instability can develop in there and lead to thunderstorm and severe weather activity. When you have, you know, areas that are 10 degrees above normal, very close to 15 to 20 degrees below normal right there. That causes a lot of instability that can cause thunderstorms to spark up in regions such as that. Moving towards like the midweek here, Wednesday on the 28th, we see that this western warm area is very much so warm by this time frame. Also much cooler for a lot of the plains and eastern states. Thursday here on the 29th, same story. Friday on the 30th. Saturday the 31st, it's a lot of the same, but you notice the last few days as we've been watching this, I mean, we've seen this warmer air mass start to spread eastward. Uh, right around that end of May time frame, beginning of June. We can see by Monday the 2nd, I mean, it doesn't look too bad. Actually, a little above normal in a lot of the East. Tuesday, same thing. Depends on where you're at, but Wednesday the 4th. Here, very, very warm in the East. And look at the uh, change out West. Colder conditions have basically taken a deep dive southward here in the West. And this has caused this really, really sharp rebound of this warmth into the east so that just kind of continues on there as we continue on we see that warmth does last for a little while but it looks like at the end of the model run it wants to return us to this warmer in the west cold in the east pattern but i don't want you guys to focus too much on that because it is at the very end of the model run and really at this point we can say that it's going to be cold and then sometime around the second third fourth fifth of of june is when we can see that warmth returning and then it is a pretty big question mark after that warm returns of what's going to be occurring now another thing we look at a lot is the cape here convective available potential energy think of it as like thunderstorm food obviously the deeper these colors towards the purple and whites here the more potential for thunderstorms that there really is and this is really really far suppressed to the south here for today on sunday and we see that suppressed look really continues here until about you guessed it the first second third here look at this as soon as this warmth moves in the fourth fifth look at how that just grows and expands to where we're really looking at all of the central and eastern states included in this potential for thunderstorm activity that really rebounds with the warm temperatures looking at the storminess we can anticipate that for tomorrow on memorial day uh, we will have some rainfall ongoing for a lot of areas throughout the plains into the deep south and southeast areas there. Uh, it's going to be pretty nasty. Um, you know, a lot of these areas here are on the fence to where you might be able to do some outdoor activities, especially as, as you move towards the evening. Uh, but it is on the fence, to say the least. Moving towards, if we can get that to get out of the way. Tuesday on the 27th, we see that rainfall continues and actually maybe spreads further north eastward. Same story for Wednesday as we see a lot of this activity is kind of doing this. It's just flowing northward into the Ohio Valley, Great Lakes, Mid-Atlantic there, as you can see. Looking towards Thursday on the 29th, we get a lot of storminess around this. This overall colder temperatures, as important to note, are typically associated with lower pressure. And overall, storms and rainfall tend to be associated with lower pressure as well. So typically when we see these cooler patterns, you see these 
uh, bigger pockets of rainfall set up. Uh, and in warmer patterns, it's typically quite a bit drier. Looking beyond this point, Friday on the 30th, we do dry up a little bit. It's a lot less stormy in the east, even as we reach towards Saturday the 31st, Sunday on the 1st, Monday the 2nd. What we're really seeing is a lot of storminess now by this point, June 2nd, in the west for a lot of the Rockies and surrounding states. There is some for the Ohio Valley, Mid-Atlantic, and Northeast there, but I think that there's, the tides kind of shift towards the west, seeing the activity at the same time that they see the colder temperatures and lower pressure. So that change is very, very close to what I was saying. Uh, Tuesday on the 3rd of June, we see this low pretty strong there over northern uh, North Dakota. There we see some rainfall and overall storminess relatively close to that low, kind of just hanging out. Um, we do see that for the Rockies, there's plenty of storminess happening, even snowfall. Uh, as we keep going, I want to take us straight towards Wednesday on the 4th. We see some snowfall really spreading in for uh, Montana. Idaho, Wyoming, as we see that colder air move in, overall the snowfall is able to get going uh, as temperatures drop low enough. And interestingly, for that first week of uh, June, I really want you guys to pay attention to this. This model is showing a low developing over Colorado and a lot of thunderstorm activity and severe weather sparking up. Keep in mind, this is right around the time frame when we see that cape really really increase in these areas so the potential could be sky high for a pretty large scale severe weather event here during the first week of june if we can get something like this to occur a stronger low just to the east of the rockies we see this kind of cross the nation bringing thunderstorms for days on end even reaching the eastern states by about sunday the 8th into monday the 9th and that's about the end of the of the model run so that's all we really have for you guys in that department looking at the total precipitation we do see the Rockies eastward overall are getting a decent amount, but the heart of it, the heart of the, the higher precipitation is going to be the southern plains, deeper south, southeast areas. Uh, looking at the anomalies, so compared to normal, we see much above average throughout that area, as I mentioned. A little drier for the northwest into a lot of the midwest, actually. Uh, it is hit or miss. There is some above, there's some below, but that is the overall consensus here. Also, the four corner states and just to the north of it do get a decent amount as well looking at the great lakes into the northeast you could argue there's another pocket of above average precipitation so really if we were to draw the line here most areas to the east of there are above average so makes sense lower pressure more storms more precipitation overall looking at the storm prediction center outlooks here's the day one outlook for today on sunday the 25th we see general thunderstorm risks in the lighter greens and that's where we expect general thunderstorms but anything is possible so heat every watch warning and advisory the darker green area there laying across that pocket where we're watching the potential suppressed to, as we mentioned, that is our level one marginal risk where we expect isolated severe weather to occur. And then your yellow area there is your level two slight risk and your two orange areas, Oklahoma and Texas, as well as the deep south there, all being a level three enhanced risk where we expect a little bit more widespread severe weather to occur. Day two on Monday the 26th, nothing changes too much. We have the general thunderstorm risk areas, the marginal risk, the slight risk for Texas, Louisiana, and Arkansas, but it is uh, a similar location, and really for Tuesday the 27th as well. We have three general thunderstorm risk areas, a marginal risk, and a slight risk over Texas. So pretty stagnant thunderstorm chances really sticking over the same exact areas for a few days here as our jet stream ridges in the west and troughs in the east it is going to pull a lot of storm systems along this area, and that's why we're seeing the potential along that Gulf Coast region. With all that being said, we upload every single day, so be sure to subscribe. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload, so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.